What's up, fellas? Hope, hope you guys are having a good Holy Week. It's Holy Tuesday right now. It's snowed where I'm at. It's real cold. And I hope you guys have been fasting because that's what we should be doing during Lent. I'm trying to do the one meal per day thing. That is the traditional Lenten black fast. It's been pretty tough so far, but I'm, I'm trying to do it for Holy Week. Anyways, the topic for today is winning converts and in order to rebuild Christendom, we have to be we have to change our mindset on winning converts. We have to be active and proactive with it. I read this book, Winning Converts. It's a very good read, written in 1948 by Reverend uh, John O'Brien. And in the book, what's shocking to know is that in 1948, it wasn't uncommon for Catholic parishes to win 100 converts per year, and some parishes won up to 400 converts per year. And how was it that they were able to do so? It's because they were proactive. And there, there was, so each of these chapters is written by uh, the priests from some of the most successful dioceses and parishes, and they all have different approaches, different things. But the one thing in common is that they all are active. And it's not this kind of passive attitude of, Oh, preach the gospel always, but use words as necessary. People use that quote a lot, quoted by St. Francis Assisi. And they say it's basically an excuse to be passive and to not uh, take action. Sure, you need to be holy, but I think we should view winning converts as an active process and not as this kind of, I'm going to be vaguely holy and vaguely nice, and then somehow people are going to eventually become Catholic. That doesn't work. I think it's clear. Why is it that we are w winning so many fewer Catholics today in the 21st century in 2023 compared to in the past? Part of it is because our liturgy got nerfed with Vatican II, uh, the Novus Ordo. Definitely, I think it's valid, but it was implemented very badly. The traditional Latin Mass definitely was bringing far more converts in the past. Also, the liturgical calendar was nerfed. They got rid of Pentecost season. After Pentecost, there was a whole season. Uh, and now it's called ordinary time. Before, there was this whole ethos of evangelizing and going out into the world with zeal, just like at Pentecost, and being active, trying to, trying to convert the whole world. But now it's just ordinary time. So liturgically, it doesn't incentivize us to be active, uh, trying to convert the whole world. But also, we are passive. And we have this idea that you have to be vaguely nice in order to win converts, but that is wrong. That is clearly hasn't worked. And another thing is people, there's kind of this negative view of the words marketing, advertising, sales, um, and that kind of thing. But in this book, they, they clearly have a different view of these things. They view these tactics and uh, crafts as being valuable and as a way to actively convert people. There was all kinds of groups and clubs that were actively uh, trying to pursue converts. I'll go into those in a future video. There's a lot of different approaches. I think we can learn a lot from this book. It's, it's very good. I'll, I'll uh, link it down below. It's worth reading, but imagine if we if each of us made it our goal to win one convert per year over the course of you know years and years even if it was once every two or three years you'd win probably 20 30 converts and there's a few stories within it's definitely possible there's a story in this book about a one-armed factory worker guy and he over the course of 25 years working in this factory was able to convert 100 people and the way he did it was he converted 19 factory worker men and with them, their whole families were converted. And that added up to about a hundred people just, and he had just a very simple like pitch that he would, he would ask. He was just, he wasn't afraid to ask people if they were just be direct and, and confront people about whether or not, and inviting people to stuff. So this, this one-armed factory worker was able to convert 100 souls. I've converted one person, uh, my 
my high school friends so far, but I, I have a few, I, I'm plotting and game planning to convert more people that I directly know. So we have to change our attitude about, in, if we want to restore Christendom, we have to start winning back the masses. We have to be active and we have to take real efforts, real proactive measures in order to do so. Another story, it's very simple. It's not super complicated to win converts also. There's this old man and he is entering into the church and the, everyone is happy. The priest is happy, but then someone asks him, why didn't you enter the, he's like, oh man, I should have done this so long ago. And, the, and people ask him, why exactly did you not enter the church early? And he says, because no one asked me. There's a lot of people out there who they simply just don't know anything about Catholicism and they just, no one has asked them to join or no one has initiated. I mean, if you're questioning, if, if someone is not even trying to convert you to their way, then why would it be true? You know, the, the Mormons, the Muslims, the Jehovah's Witnesses, all of these different groups, they have far more zeal than the Catholics today. I think even we have to engage. We have to engage with the culture. We have to be on social media. Some of us, you know, we have to be active. We have to be proactive. And that is how we are going to win more souls for Christ. And if we don't do it, then who else is going to do it? You know, uh, if you if you truly love your family, friends, your family and friends and, and people that you know, then you would wish for them to be converted. So... I have the goal of winning a convert this year. I, I've been working, I've, I've been taking proactive steps, but there's a lot to learn. And there's, it's, it's the type of thing, it's a skill, you know, winning converts, part of it is salesmanship, um, part of it is trial and error, part, of, ultimately God is the one who converts people, but we need to get away from this idea that we can be passive and we can try to not convert people. You can get those green scapulars if you're familiar with that. It's all good stuff. I'll be making more videos. There is a bunch of different, there used to be a bunch of different organizations that were just grassroots organizations dedicated to winning converts specifically. And they, they were serious about it. And they had huge, they used the newspapers. They utilized the newspapers. I'll talk about that in a future video. So in the same way that they were active and then you can see the fruits of their labors, getting hundreds of converts per year, they were growing the church actively, whereas the church is shrinking because we're passive and we're, we're kind of weak. So I think if, if the West has, if the church is going to grow, um, it's going to take a lot, but I think it can be done just in kind of a grassroots manner. Even if you're super busy, if you just... Pay attention and be observant to the people around you. You know, the people, your co-workers, your family members, your friends, all these people are potential people who could be converted. So I feel an obligation to convert these people because I love them. And I hope that we can all change our attitudes about this and seek to build up the Christ's kingdom, like on a physical level and spiritual level and on a personnel level. So hope you guys like this. Um, and I'll see you in the next one.